In this video, we will walk you through the entire speaking test with its three parts. What kind of response to give to the different types of questions? And how to impress the examiner with a wonderful vocabulary so that you can score band 9. Here are the four criteria that will determine your band in the speaking test. We are displaying only the criteria for bands 7 to 9. Read them carefully, because your success depends on you following these requirements. We will explain these in detail. Fluency and coherence mean ability to talk with normal levels of continuity, rate and effort and to link ideas and language together to form coherent, connected speech. Key indicators of fluency are speech rate, ideally, not too slow. Speech continuity, ideally, flow of speech will not be excessively interrupted by false starts, backtracking. Functionless repetitions of words and phrases. Or pausing during which the test taker searches for words. Key indicators of coherence are Logical sequencing of spoken sentences Clear marking of stages in a discussion, narration or argument like appropriate use of pausing, markers and fillers Relevance of spoken sentences to the general purpose of a turn Use of cohesive devices within and between spoken sentences for example logical connectors, pronouns and conjunctions. Lexical resource refers to the range of vocabulary at the test taker's disposal, which will influence the range of topics which they can discuss, and the precision with which meanings are expressed and attitudes conveyed. Key indicators of lexical resource are Variety of words used Adequacy and appropriacy of vocabulary in relation to the requirements of Referential meaning, the correct labeling of things and concepts Style, formal or informal Collocation, including idiomatic expressions Indicating the speaker's attitude to content. Whether favorable, neutral or unfavorable. Ability to use paraphrase, getting round a vocabulary gap by using other words, with or without noticeable hesitation. Grammatical range and accuracy refers to the accurate and appropriate use of syntactic forms in order to meet speaking test requirements, and to the test taker's range of grammatical resources, a feature which will help to determine the complexity of propositions, which can be expressed. Key indicators of range are the length of spoken sentences, appropriate use of subordinate clauses within clauses and phrases, Complexity of the verb phrase Correct use of auxiliaries in continuous or perfect aspect, modality and passive voice Complexity of other phrases, pause, too Use of pre and post modification Items before and after the head noun adjective, etc. Range of sentence structures, especially to move elements around for information focus. Key indicators of accuracy are, pause, two. Error density that is, the number of grammatical errors in a given amount of speech. The communicative effect of error, its effect on intelligibility and precision or expression.
pronunciation refers to the accurate and sustained use of a range of phonological features to convey meaningful messages. Key indicators of pronunciation are the ability to divide speech into meaningful utterances or chunks within spoken sentences, the appropriate use of rhythm and stress timing, and the linking of sounds using features such as the elision to produce connected speech. The use of stress for example emphatic slash contrastive and intonation to enhance meaning. The production of sounds at the word and phoneme level for example, word stress, vowel and consonant production, and the degree of effort required of the listener to understand these. The overall effect of accent on intelligibility. Does accent matter? Will I get a better band if I speak with a British or Australian accent? The answer is no. Your accent does not matter in speaking test, as long as you can be understood. Speak clearly and at a natural pace, stressing words that are important, or that emphasize or contrast ideas that you are trying to express. Speak in meaningful phrases and don't produce single words. Vary the pitch of your voice and imitate the English intonation patterns you hear every day, on the radio, FM or television. Up and down, softly and with stress, pause for a second. Speak at a normal speed, so that your examiner can understand you. Now we will talk about the format of the speaking test. The IELTS speaking is the same for both, the general training and academic test, and assesses your use of spoken English. Each speaking test is given face-to-face -face with an IELTS certified examiner, and each one is recorded in case further review is necessary. The speaking test takes between 11 and 14 minutes, and consists of three parts where you will discuss a variety of topics with an IELTS examiner. You will be given a quiet environment for the examination, and the examiner will encourage you to talk more. In part one, you will be asked general questions about who you are as well as questions about a variety of familiar subjects, including your home, family, job, studies, and interests. This part focuses on your capacity to share thoughts and knowledge on common topics by responding to a variety of questions. It lasts between four and five minutes. In part two, the examiner will provide you with a topic and ask you to speak for one to two minutes about it. You will be handed the topic on a card, and you will also be handed a pencil and a piece of paper for making notes. You will see the speaking prompt and some points related to it on the card. You will have exactly one minute before speaking to prepare and make notes. When your time is up, the examiner will use a timer to notify you. You will then start your long turn, where you need to speak for up to two minutes. In part three, your proficiency in expressing and defending viewpoints, as well as in analyzing, debating, and speculating on a variety of subjects related to the broad theme you covered in part two, will be evaluated. Let us begin with part one of the speaking test. In this part, you will be asked general questions about who you are as well as questions about a variety of familiar subjects, including your home, family, job, studies, and interests. This part lasts between four and five minutes. You will be asked a couple of scripted questions by the examiner. If your answers are too brief, the examiner will ask you to elaborate with a why or why not. This part of the exam uses a question and answer format and focuses on your capacity to share thoughts and knowledge on common topics by responding to a variety of questions. We will show you some common questions of part one and sample answers. Take a look at this question. Do you work or study? I 
am a student of grade 11 and my subjects are physics, chemistry and mathematics. I plan to pursue higher studies in computer science from Canada. McGill or McMaster University would be my top choices because they offer the ideal combination of disciplines for me. I work for General Engineers, an engineering firm. My work as a software engineer in the systems department is to guarantee that all of the systems that manage the machines in the tool room are operational and free of glitches or defects. I supervise a group of three junior software developers. It's a difficult work, but I enjoy it. Here is another sample part one question. Please note. These sample answers are just to give you an idea of what you can say. Please do not copy these in the test. Are there any types of films that you do not enjoy? Yes, I'm not really into action films. All that violence just makes me feel sick. I went to see John Wick at the cinema because I'd heard it was very good, but I had to leave after only half an hour or so. It was not made for me. If you notice, the examiner asked for the films that you do not like. If you reply by talking about the types of films you like, it would be a blunder. Do you play sports? Yes, I am a big fan of outdoor sports such as cricket and football. I was even a part of my school's cricket team. I have also played basketball in school. I make sure that I find some time every week for a few hours of games. No, I am an indoor person. I love reading and I am a voracious reader. I have a habit of reading a book before sleeping. During my vacations last year, I read several masterpieces and some fiction. I prefer fiction and thriller genre, though I can read anything I lay my hands upon. What kind of food do you like most? I absolutely love fresh seafood. Especially lobsters and prawns. Fortunately, I live near the sea, so seafood is available in abundance, that too at a throwaway price. Are there any types of food that you dislike? Well, I'm not very keen on red meat actually. Also, vegetables are very low in my list of preferences, though I can tolerate potatoes, if they are served mashed, or, as french fries. Do you enjoy watching sports? Actually no, I'm not really a fan of sports to be honest. I prefer going to shopping or seeing a good film at the cinema. What do you like about living in your hometown? Well, there's a lovely park near where I live, which I absolutely love especially in spring when the flowers are so beautiful. I go for a walk there most weekends. Like and subscribe our YouTube channel and watch more such videos to help you score better in IELTS. What would you do to make your school or job more interesting? I would make classes more hands-on. I believe that my visits to the museum and factories taught me more than the textbooks. Furthermore, I would enjoy it if schools made physical exercises mandatory for all students, as I believe a healthy body leads to a healthy mind. I will institute a three-day weekend policy to allow us to spend more time with our family while maintaining a work-life balance. I am of the opinion that when the employees are relaxed, they are far more productive than when they have a load on their head. Here are some better phrases that you can use in place of the simpler ones. Instead of I like football. Say, football appeals to me. Or, I am fond of. Instead of I don't know. Say, 
I'm afraid I have no idea. Or, I have no clue. Or, I never thought of it. Instead of I don't play much. Say, I'm afraid I'm not much of a sporting person. Instead of I like music. Say, I'm a music aficionado. Instead of I like reading. Say, I'm an avid, voracious, keen, passionate reader. Instead of I like dancing. Say, I'm a dancing enthusiast. Instead of sometimes. Say, every once in a while. Or not very often. When you start your answers, try to begin by using one of these phrases. I firmly believe that. It seems to me. In my opinion. According to me. From what I know about. I would argue that. In my experience. I find it hard to believe or accept. Now we come to the second part. Individual long turn. In part two of the speaking test, you will get a cue card with the topic and three bullet points written. You will have one minute to prepare yourself. The examiner will give you a pencil and paper to make notes. You can look at the notes while speaking. After one minute preparation time is over, the examiner will say start. You have to speak fluently for two minutes on the topic. The moment your two minutes are over, the examiner will ask you to stop. This is what a cue card looks like. It could be a small card, or a page in a booklet which the examiner will put in front of you. The topics will be simple and easy to talk about. Yet, it is a good idea if you start reading a little every day, so that you have relevant vocabulary and matter to talk about. We will show you some samples of speaking test, part 2. Here is a sample topic. Again, these are just to give you an idea of what you can say. Please do not copy these in the test. Listen to a sample response. My hometown is one of the most beautiful towns of the country. It boasts of breathtaking scenery, mouth-watering food, and the most amiable people on the planet. The town I come from is not a huge metropolis, but we have a vibrant blend of history and modernity. The town was once a mecca of traders, moving from one continent to another, buying and selling gold and spices. We still have the historic marketplace in the old area of the town. A tie-up with the National Historic Society boosted its popularity across the country, as well as internationally. Situated next to a lake, there are boat rides and organized tours in the evenings. The vibrant street festivals transformed the usually quiet area into a bustling and lively celebration of music, art, and culture. It has now become a major tourist attraction of the region. Another landmark is the airport building, which was inaugurated a couple of years back. It was designed by the renowned architect whose name I cannot recall now, and is absolutely awesome. It has its own hotel for transit passengers, a massive food court, and the best thing, it mostly uses natural light. The old airport has now become a flying club for local flying enthusiasts. Another feather in our cap is the local cuisine. The town has some of the best, most delectable meals to offer, and at a bargain price. Several television stations have sent crews to tour the restaurants and interview customers. The majority of the ingredients used in the dishes are grown locally. As a result, the taste and aroma are one of a kind. And cannot be replicated anywhere. You can discover equally great vegetarian and non-vegetarian cuisine. Although seafood is a bit hard to find, and expensive, on weekends, the entire town puts on a festive appearance, with eateries crammed with customers. I also consider the people of my hometown as my extended family. Though we may not know each other, the overall atmosphere is extremely cordial. I have seen people going the extra mile to help out tourists stuck in muddy roads. Or facing the language barrier. 
some shopkeepers even keep a bit of spare change separately to help out outsiders with parking charges. Despite not being a modern megacity, my hometown is nothing short of a heaven for me. Here is another sample topic. Last summer, my grandfather underwent a minor surgical procedure. Thankfully, he is absolutely safe and healthy, but the procedure got everyone worried. In fact, it proved to be a blessing in disguise as all his children, which means all my uncles and aunts, had flown in from wherever they were to stand by his side. After the procedure, everyone heaved a sigh of relief and decided to have a small function to celebrate grandpa's recovery. So every family pooled in money, we were divided into teams, and each team was assigned a role. A decorating team, an entertainment team to prepare games and activities, a food arranging team, and a finance team were all there. I was on the meal planning team, and our job was to make sure that the best of all cuisines were available to the guests. We went to all of the famous restaurants in each cuisine, Italian, Chinese, and Indian, to collect quotes. The restaurants welcomed us with open arms, and when they found out we were looking for caterers for a celebration, they treated us to free dinner. Throughout the celebrations, we planned a variety of games and activities for elderly, children, and teenagers. We had games like the sack race, the blindfold run, and many more where the victors received generous prizes. Musical chairs never gets old for anyone of any age. We enjoyed a new cuisine each of the three days, and the caterers threw in free ice cream. We invited our neighbors as well on the last day. And it felt like a mini wedding reception. All three days were filled with laughter and good times. Everyone got to know one another. And we made friends with relatives who were mostly mentioned. But seldom seen. It was depressing to see them leave, but we have since decided to make it a regular event, and meet once every year. Here is topic 3. Many people have influenced me, and I continue to seek encouragement from a variety of people. My father has been my ultimate role model, a source of inspiration, and a pillar of strength in my life. His unwavering dedication to his family, his work ethic, and his genuine kindness have left an indelible mark on my character. My father is a down-to-earth, jovial person, yet rigorous when it comes to discipline. As a child, I was perplexed by this. But as I grew older, I realized that it was done on purpose. I don't recall him ever raising his voice or forcing us to do anything, but he was firm. He ran a modest factory with only a few employees. I have pleasant memories of him taking us to the plant to celebrate some accomplishment or festival. He would sing with them, celebrate the top achievers, and lavish them with gifts. I vividly recall a time when, during a difficult economic period, employees worked for three months without being paid. My father exemplifies honesty, compassion, and drive. He likes classical music, but he never stopped us from listening to pop music or made fun of it. He gives honest criticism and is a superb influencer. Excellent at coaxing us out of anything. Even warm bed on cold mornings. He taught us to get up early, whether it was a school day or a holiday. So we had the full day to enjoy and play. At that time, it seemed unnecessary and tough, but now I realize that his discipline actually made us strong to face the world. Now, when I have to get up early to commute to office, I don't grumble or moan. It is because of what my father taught me. Another quality I respect in him is his ability to keep his cool under pressure. Even in the face of adversity, he remains calm and cheerful. We once faced a significant financial crisis after a section of the factory burned down. Everyone was plainly concerned. But dad stayed composed. Not a frown or irritation. He would say. I'm doing my best. God will handle the rest. I still return to his words for inspiration and tranquilly. As I navigate life's journey. 
I often find myself emulating the qualities that define my father. His integrity. His ability to find humor even in difficult situations. And his dedication to his loved ones are traits I hold dear and strive to embody in my own life. In whatever manner I can. I attempt to imitate him and follow in his footsteps. Here is topic 4. I am not so much into reading, but I certainly consider myself an authority on movies. I think of movies as a mirror of the society, and in my opinion, the movie which reflects this extremely well is the 1941 movie, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is a breathtaking drama about the uses and abuses of riches and power. It's a typical American tragedy about a man driven by passion, ambition, and greed who pushes himself to the point of destroying himself and everything around him. The basic premise of Citizen Kane centers around the fictional affluent newspaper magnate Charles Foster Kane. Following Kane's death at the beginning of the film, a reporter interviews those who knew him in an effort to better understand his life and the meaning of Rosebud, his final word. The central theme of Citizen Kane is found in the relationships that Charles Foster Kane lacks despite his affluence. Kane learns that the actual measure of a man's worth is not what he has around him as he ages, but rather who he surrounds himself with. In this film, Charles Foster Kane's misery and sadness are the outcome of his assumption that money delivers all the wonderful things in life. Orson Welles, the director of the film, introduced a sophistication in terms of narrative, the way the story was told and its sequence. Citizen Kane was unquestionably ahead of its time. This kind of uncompromising, unsentimental drama was not popular during a time when titles like The Wizard of Oz, Gone with the Wind, and How Green Was My Valley were more popular. In the Oscars, it lost in almost every category where it was nominated. Through nine nominations, Citizen Kane won only one award at the Oscars, Best Original Screenplay. Nevertheless, till today, students and critics of cinema study this film to learn and understand how something so intense can be delivered so easily through cinema. Here is topic 5. Pause the video and try to speak yourself. See how it goes. I am a food aficionado who enjoys a variety of cuisines. If I had to pick just one, it would be Korean. My love for Korean cuisine began by chance, when I strolled into a restaurant thinking it offered Thai food, but it turned out to be a Korean restaurant. I chose to remain and get food because I was famished. I didn't have high expectations because it was my first time trying Korean food. But I was taken aback. The dinner was scrumptious and very inexpensive. Since then, I've grown a huge fan of Korean cuisine. Rice, vegetables, and fish dominate Korean cuisine. Korean cuisine or hansik is a dynamic and flavorful culinary tradition known for its intricate balance of bold spices, vibrant colors, and diverse ingredients. As Korea is located between the Chinese mainland and the islands of Japan, it shares many cultural characteristics with the two countries. Korean cuisine reflects a complex interaction of the natural environment and different cultural trends. Central to Korean cuisine is the concept of banchan, a variety of side dishes that accompany the main meal. Unlike other cultures, in Korean culture, soup is served as part of the main course, rather than at the beginning or the end of the meal. Kimchi is a staple side dish that a majority of Koreans can't go without. This spicy, fermented vegetable dish is a staple in Korean meals. Bibimbap is a Korean rice dish topped with an assortment of fresh and seasonal vegetables, fried eggs, and other ingredients. Soybean paste, soy sauce, and red chili paste are three of the most basic condiments. These sauces offer a uniquely savory and rich salty taste. 
No wonder the cuisine is becoming as famous as their pop music. Since then, I have discovered three more Korean restaurants in downtown, and you will always find me in one of them during the weekends. Topic 6 Out of many valuables that I possess, the one that is most important to me would be a watch, given to me by my grandfather. Though it is not a high-end product, but it works like a charm. It is quite well equipped with functions like timer, alarm, and stopwatch. I have many fond memories attached to it. First of all, the watch reminds me of my achievement, and invigorates me. It was not very long ago, I was appearing for my board exams. I had worked really hard to attain good grades in my board exams, burnt the midnight oil, and was totally focused on the exams. During the preparation, I felt the need for a watch to time myself. I even complained to my parents about this a couple of times. My hard work paid off and I came out with flying colors. I secured the highest marks in two subjects in my school. I was on cloud nine. My family threw a small celebration and I got this watch as a gift from my grandfather. So, during my exams or any other challenging times, I wear this watch to boost my confidence. Secondly, the watch is very useful for me when I sit down to study. It has a built-in timer and alarm function, which I use frequently when preparing for tests. I time myself and check if I am able to complete a sample i.e. LTS test paper within the given time or not. Moreover, the watch also has some fashion value. It goes quite well with black formals as well as casuals and since it has a black dial with golden arms. It increases my fashion quotient. Because of the watch, I was quite popular among my friends. I was the only one among my friends who got a watch as a gift. Others got either a laptop or an iPad. I consider this item not just as a watch, but a symbol of family affection, achievement and determination. Topic 7. Think of some points before you hear the sample response. The city I live in has a very interesting history. It was the center of a freedom movement and is dotted with numerous buildings and edifices built during and before the revolution. The ancient ruins in the region hold significant historic importance, providing insights into the lives and cultures of people who lived there centuries ago. The most prominent building is the Freedom Castle, a magnificent structure located in the old square of the city. The Freedom Castle was built in the year 1857 as a seat of the government. It was known as the governor's residence and housed the treasury, an army, and home of the governor. It was the biggest building the entire country at that time. It had a water-filled moat all around, allegedly infested with man-eating alligators, though no one ever saw anything, even a fish. The moat is now all covered up, and the building now houses a museum and office of the local government. The building is very impressive to look at. It has huge walls a meter thick and ceiling double the normal height. You have to buy tickets to enter the museum from the ticket windows at the main entrance, or buy it online. The museum showcases some artifacts from the dawn of mankind, such as spears and crockery fragments from 700 BC, and also hundreds of items from the Industrial Revolution and the Freedom Struggle. The most popular section of the castle is the garden, where the high-ranking nobles and feudal lords used to have parties. It is a huge garden, still maintained by the current government and now used for government functions and award ceremonies. The high walls of the garden are lined by beautiful and massive bushes of flowers, such as roses, chrysanthemum and many others. There are fountains and other water features spread sporadically all over. At night, the castle becomes a beehive of activities with mammoth floodlights lighting up the castle and kiosk of eateries lining up the entrance to the castle. Locals come here to enjoy the street food and stroll in the unrestricted areas. The castle is a national heritage site and is also featured in one of our currency note. Last year, truckloads of money were spent on repairing the crumbling parts of the castle. The castle is not just a tourist attraction, but also a symbol of our freedom and unity. 
looking at it motivates and inspires everyone. Topic 8 Although I was not a big fan of traveling by road, one road trip last summer left a deep impact on me. And from that time onwards, I looked for opportunities to make road adventures. It was a winter morning and I had to travel from my hometown to a city some 300 kilometers north, for a business meeting. Due to inclement weather, the flight was cancelled and my colleague and I were stranded at the airport. As it was of paramount importance for us to attend the meeting, my colleague and I decided to book a taxi for the destination. Since I had never travelled such large distances by road, I was a bit apprehensive. The meeting was crucial, and we had Hobson's choice. I agreed to hire a taxi, albeit grudgingly. We got into a comfortable taxi, me still regretting, but once the city limit ended, and we spent 30 minutes on the road. Things changed rapidly for me. I was spellbound at the sight of lush green mountains on both sides and a small stream running noisily on its rocky bed along with the road. The fresh cool air and the sight of the tall green trees left me hypnotized. Though the weather was gloomy due to clouds, I felt elated. My colleague promptly went to sleep, while I gazed at the nature with awe. After covering nearly half the way, we had to stop due to rain, but that made the scene more picturesque. I had never before seen trees so green, and it seemed they were dancing and singing in the rain with high wind rushing through their tops. We had stopped at a petrol station. Fortunately for us, it had a tea kiosk. We asked the owner if he could make something to eat for us. Trust me, that was the best omelette I have ever had in my life. Since it was still drizzling, and unsafe to drive, we sat around a warm stove and took turns to share horror stories. The tea stall owner shared some seemingly true stories, thinking of which gives me goosebumps even now. When the rain stopped, we decided to make a move. The road was glistening due to rainwater. The clouds had parted and the orange light from the setting sun gave the whole scene an amazing orange hue, leaving me and my co-passengers staring at the spectacle with open mouths. Due to long time spent in the corporate culture, we had never seen the nature in such a spectacular manner. We are used to false ceilings and artificial lights. The driver saw our amazement and laughed, for him this was an everyday thing. He was always on the road, ferrying passengers between cities, and enjoying this incredible vision. For a second, I wanted to exchange jobs with the driver. From that time onwards, for all nearby meetings, I prefer to travel by road as far as possible, instead of taking a flight. Topic 9 I recently had the incredible opportunity to visit the picturesque town of Pataka in Thailand, and it was truly a vacation like no other. Nestled on the island of Phuket, Pataka offered a perfect blend of relaxation and adventure. The first thing that struck me was the breathtaking beauty of the beaches. The powdery soft sand met the crystal clear waters of the Andaman Sea, creating a scene straight out of a travel magazine. I spent my days basking in the sun, taking refreshing dips in the ocean, and enjoying water sports that made my heart race with excitement. One of the highlights of my trip was exploring Pataka's vibrant night markets. The colorful stalls were a feast for the senses, offering a variety of local handicrafts, clothing, and souvenirs. But it was the aroma of street food that truly enchanted me. I indulged in mouth-watering Thai delicacies, from aromatic curries to grilled seafood that melted in my mouth. Adventures awaited at every turn. I embarked on a jungle trek that led me through lush forests to discover hidden waterfalls. The feeling of standing before a cascading waterfall, surrounded by nature's tranquility, was a moment of pure bliss. And when I ventured underwater for snorkeling, I found myself in an underwater wonderland, surrounded by colorful coral reefs and mesmerizing marine life. Evenings in Pataka were just as magical. The beach came alive with the vibrant nightlife. I danced to the rhythm of lively music at beach clubs, and watched the moon's reflection shimmer on the water's surface. 
But amidst the excitement, Pataka also had moments of serenity. I visited local monasteries, where the peaceful ambience and spiritual presence provided a welcome escape from the world's hustle and bustle. Leaving Pataka was bittersweet, as the memories I had made and the experiences I had were unlike anything I'd encountered before. The town's charm, the warmth of its people, and the stunning landscapes left an indelible mark on my heart. My time in Pataka was a journey of discovery, adventure, and relaxation that I'll forever cherish. Here is the final one. Topic 10. My favorite electronic device is my gaming laptop, a technological marvel that merges performance and entertainment seamlessly. At first glance, the laptop's design exudes a sense of modernity and sophistication. Its compact size belies the immense power it holds within. A powerful processor, often paired with a dedicated graphics card, ensures that even the most demanding games run smoothly and seamlessly. But it was not so easy to get. My parents had put a simple worded, yet the most difficult condition in the world, get more than band 8.5 in the IELTS and we will buy you a gaming laptop of your choice. I readily agreed. But, they say, easier said than done. I had to work my fingers to the bone and ensure that my grades do not slip. I got my friends involved in it too, so they all helped me search for a coaching that can prepare me online, for IELTS. I came across IELTSclassesonline.com and immediately joined their online classes. The rigorous practice and personal guidance worked wonders for my score. My test results were truly amazing and the very next day, I was in the store, getting my tailor-made gaming laptop assembled. Since I got this device, my life has changed. I can create content for YouTube, do my studies and also, play the most high-tech, demanding games without a glitch. Now if the game gets stuck, I know it is the developer's fault. Because my gadget is flawless. I started my own YouTube channel where I guide the views about gaming laptop, their configuration and which device will suit what kind of load. Editing and adding overlays is now a piece of cake. Streaming, content creation and multitasking has become effortless. My gaming laptop isn't just a device, it's a companion that accompanies me on thrilling quests and offers a canvas for creativity. It's a symbol of technology's ability to transform entertainment and connect people across the globe. We now come to part 3 of the speaking test. In part 3 of the speaking test, the examiner will ask further questions which are connected to the topics discussed in part 2. It is a two-way discussion with the examiner. In this part, the examiner will speak more with you, and may ask you to defend your arguments in order to assess how effectively you can talk about abstract concepts, and will last 4-5 to five minutes. Questions here will be open-ended. You are expected to give long, detailed answers. Try to answer the examiner's questions in full. Extend your answers and don't wait for the examiner to prompt you with a question. When your answers are short, this shows the examiner that you cannot talk in detail about a topic. If the examiner says why, they are prompting you to give a reason for your answer and to extend more fully. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your comments will motivate us bring out more such videos. It is important that you attempt to extend your responses as much as you can. These speech functions may be used in the test. Expressing your opinion. Agreeing or disagreeing with something. Looking at the advantages and disadvantages of something. Giving reasons for your opinion. 
giving examples to support your opinion. Describing the situation in your country. Thinking about the future. Assessing the importance of something. Asking the examiner for clarification or to explain something. Suggesting solutions. Comparing and contrasting. Depending on what you are asked, these linking words and phrases can be used. Sequencing, ordering information. To begin with, moving on to the next reason. Secondly, thirdly, subsequently, on top of that, later, after this, finally. Adding information. Another thing that comes to mind. Also, besides, and, additionally, another good example of this is, and one more thing, another reason for this. Indicating opinion and attitude. Unfortunately, however, actually, to be honest, definitely, essentially, frankly, basically, clearly, I'm afraid, if you ask me, sadly, thankfully, in fact, seriously, as a matter of fact. Comparing and contrasting. Similarly, in the same way, equally, likewise, in a similar fashion, if I compare it to my country. However, although, instead of, despite, on one hand, on the other hand, in the opposite way, in contrast, whereas. Giving examples. A great example of this is, for example, for instance, a personal example is, in other words, a striking example of this. A classic example is, a clear example of this can be seen, such as, illustrated by. Stalling, thinking about what to say next. Let me think about that. That's a difficult or interesting question. I haven't thought of that before. Well, actually, basically. Generalizing. Generally, broadly speaking, as a rule, on the whole, it is often said that, in most cases, the vast majority of, a small minority of. Result. As a result, because of this, therefore, consequently, so, then, These sample responses are just to give you an idea of what you can say. Please do not copy these in the test, as the question you get may be different. Do you think online shopping will make normal shops disappear? I believe it is wishful thinking to say that online shopping will wipe out physical shops, because while online shopping is growing by leaps and bounds, the brick and mortar shops still have their share of customers. Numerous people I know still prefer to visit the shop and see or feel the product before buying, whether it is apparel or vegetables. So, in my opinion, as long as customers want an experience before they pay, the brick and mortar shops are not going anywhere. Another question, on the same topic, is put forth by the examiner. But why are so many brick and mortar shops closing down? That is an interesting observation. In my opinion, this is because the shop owners have not bothered to unlearn and relearn the trade. Online shopping posed a colossal challenge to them, but they continued to function the old school way, ignoring the elephant in the room. Online shopping offered massive discounts, convenience of free home delivery, and free returns. 
those brick and mortar shops that modified their working style to face the challenge, have survived. Those who were caught napping, have had to close their shutters. Would you prefer to work from home or work from office? This is a difficult decision for me. While I appreciate office relationships, nice chit-chats in between meetings, and camaraderie, working from home provides unequaled comfort. Most essential, I am present for the family, for the children, assisting them, playing with them, and helping with domestic chores. All of these elements are critical. However, focus on office job is obviously compromised. I cannot concentrate on any official task without being distracted or disturbed. I'd rather divide the week and do a little bit of both. Do you think internet has benefited the common people? Oh yes, absolutely. Internet has created a whole new kind of business. We can now study, buy, sell anything online. For example, there is IELTS classes online.com, where I can prepare for my IELTS exam with the best trainers, comfortably from my home, saving my time and money on commuting. Moreover, nearly every major shop in my hometown now has online presence, and I can buy order goods through their website, and even make payment. All this is a result of the internet. And during the pandemic lockdown, people became more tech savvy, which has further invigorated the online business. Do you support a minimum age for use of social media? Question mark. In my opinion, it is essential to put necessary safeguards and restrictions on the use of social media by children in a certain age bracket. Banning the use will not solve the problem and neither will policing the users. A controlled, or if I may say, light version of social media could be made available, with limited functionality. Things like image or video uploads can be allowed only after some time, chats to be allowed with limited group and not strangers and so on. A friend of mine suggested that social media accounts of underage users could be linked to their parents' accounts, just like bank accounts, so parents can see what the children are accessing while surfing the net. This seems like a million dollar idea, and I am sure it will keep the youngsters out of a lot of trouble. Do you think that social media is more harmful than beneficial? Question mark. If we do a poll, I am sure a vast majority will support the claim that social media is harmful. However, my experience with social media has been quite favorable. I run online classes and it is totally due to the social media. So I would vouch for the usefulness of the social media. On the other hand, I do agree that social media is not all safe and secure. Especially for gullible youngsters. Anyone can create a fake identify and interact with anyone. All the time pretending to be someone else. But this can happen elsewhere as well. If we ban social media, will crime stop? Will con men and criminals disappear? Do you consider climate change a priority? Absolutely yes. Climate change is happening very rapidly. If we do not act soon, I am afraid it may be too late to reverse the damage. Already the melting polar ice caps have increased the volume of water in our oceans. 
Consequently, several small islands in Maldives and Malaysia are submerged. Moreover, the rising global temperatures spell doom for the planet's weather patterns. We now have El Niño and La Nina much more frequently than ever. As a result, we experience extremes of hot and cold weather, and untimely rains which destroy crops. We must react before we miss the bus. What can the common people do to fight climate change? We have reached a point where no one is untouched by climate change. To curb it, ordinary people must also rise to the occasion and contribute. Stop using single-use plastic as a basic first step. Planting trees would be another step forward. I recently discovered a company that will plant a tree in your honor on your birthday every year. This is a fantastic way to celebrate, while also giving back to environment. I also feel that rather than outright prohibition or higher taxation, if the common man is incentivized, he will do more. For example, for every 10 properly disposed of plastic bottles, the individual receives one free glass bottle. We will now share some words which you can use to describe various places, tasks, and personalities in your speaking test. For more such vocabulary, watch other videos uploaded on our YouTube channel. Here are some words to describe different types of weather. We have made sentences to show you how to use them. The temperature dropped below freezing overnight, causing frost to form on the windows. Pause, 2. It's so cold outside that the water left outside has frozen into ice. Pause, 2. The bitter cold wind cut through my jacket, making me shiver uncontrollably. Pause, 2. The bone-chilling cold made me wish I had worn an extra layer of clothing. Pause, 2. The biting cold air made my face feel numb within minutes of stepping outside. Pause, 2. The blizzard raged for hours, making visibility nearly impossible and covering everything in a thick blanket of snow. Pause, 2. We had to stay indoors during the snowstorm as the winds picked up and the snow fell heavily. Pause, 2. The weather forecast predicts a heavy snowfall tonight, so be prepared for challenging road conditions. Pause, 2. As we looked out the window, we saw a flurry of snowflakes swirling in the air, creating a magical winter scene. Pause, 5. It's just drizzling outside, so you might not need an umbrella, but take it just in case. Pause, 2. The weather radar indicated widespread precipitation moving in from the west. Pause, 2. We were caught in a southern downpour while walking to the car, and we got completely soaked. Pause, 2. The weather forecast mentioned a brief shower in the afternoon, so plan your outdoor activities accordingly. Pause, 5. The heat wave has been relentless, with temperatures soaring above 45 degrees for the past week. Pause, 2. The scorching sun beat down on the desert landscape, creating shimmering waves of heat. Pause, 2. Walking around the city during a sweltering day feels like stepping into an oven. Pause, 2. The blazing heat of the summer afternoon made us seek refuge in the shade. Pause, 2. The sizzling temperatures prompted everyone to head to the beach to cool off in the water. Pause, 5. The weather today is so pleasant, with a gentle breeze and comfortable temperatures. Pause, 2. We spent the weekend in an idyllic countryside cottage, surrounded by rolling hills and blooming wildflowers. Pause, 2. The temperate climate of the coastal region makes it a popular vacation spot year-round. Pause, 2. It was a balmy, sunny, tropical day, and the waters looked clear and calm.
Here are some common words related to work or job. John felt accomplished and satisfied at the end of the day, knowing he had been incredibly productive and had completed all his tasks efficiently. Pause, 2. Her occupation as a graphic designer allows her to express her creativity while earning a living. Pause, 2. He's been striving to achieve a better work-life balance by dedicating more time to his family and personal interests outside of the office. Pause, 2. The intense work pressure during the project deadline was both challenging and motivating for the team. Pause, 2. The team had to collaborate closely to manage the heavy workload and meet the project's tight deadlines. Pause, 2. Her diligent work ethic and attention to detail ensured that every task was completed to perfection. Pause, 2. Meeting deadlines is crucial in our industry to ensure projects are completed on time and clients are satisfied. Pause, 2. Experiencing Monday morning blues is a common feeling as the weekend comes to an end and the work week begins. Pause, 2. His result-driven approach to projects not only enhances efficiency but also ensures that goals are achieved effectively. Pause, 2. Taking on the role of project manager proved to be a challenging job, requiring constant problem-solving and adaptability to navigate complex situations. Pause, 2. Navigating office politics can be challenging, as it involves understanding the dynamics and relationships within the workplace to succeed and avoid unnecessary conflicts. These are the words a student can use to talk about school. Pause. 2. The school's new curriculum focuses on incorporating interactive learning methods to engage students and enhance their understanding of various subjects. Pause. 2. She had been studying diligently for months, preparing to take the qualifying exam for the advanced mathematics course. Pause. 2. Participating in extracurricular activities like debate club and art workshops allows students to develop skills and interests beyond their academic curriculum. Pause, 2. The school's co-curricular programs, such as community service projects and leadership workshops, provide students with valuable life skills and experiences alongside their regular academic studies. Pause, 2. Her inquisitive nature led her to explore a wide range of subjects, constantly seeking knowledge and asking thought-provoking questions. Pause, 2. From a young age, his ambitious drive and determination fueled his pursuit of excellence in academics, sports, and personal growth. Pause, 2. Her diligent work ethic and commitment to her studies paid off when she consistently achieved top grades throughout her academic journey. Pause, 2. His disciplined approach to time management allowed him to balance his studies, part-time job, and extracurricular activities effectively. Pause, 10. These words can be useful if you are asked to describe your hometown or some other city. As the sun set over the ocean, the colors painted across the sky were truly mesmerizing, creating a scene of pure beauty. Pause, 2. The hike led us to a breathtaking viewpoint, offering a scenic panorama of the lush valley and the distant mountains. Pause, 2. She preferred the peaceful atmosphere of the suburbs, where she could enjoy a quieter life away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Pause, 2. The city's efficient transport network, including buses, trains, and subways, makes it convenient for residents to navigate and commute within the urban area. Pause, 2. The ancient ruins in the region hold significant historic importance, providing insights into the lives and cultures of people who lived there centuries ago. Pause, 2. The iconic Eiffel Tower in Paris stands as a world-famous tourist attraction, drawing millions of visitors each year to marvel at its intricate iron lattice and panoramic city views. Pause, 2. The vibrant street festival transformed the usually quiet town into a bustling and lively celebration of music, art, and culture. Pause, 2. The city's downtown area is always bustling with people, and its lively atmosphere is a testament to its status as a thriving urban center. Pause, 2. The local market is a vibrant and lively place, with vendors selling fresh produce, 
colorful textiles, and handmade crafts, creating a bustling environment that reflects the community's spirit. These words describe a personality. You can use them to describe any person, or if asked, their role model. His magnanimous gesture of donating a substantial portion of his earnings to charity showcases his compassionate and kind-hearted nature. His jovial nature makes him a favorite among friends and colleagues, always bringing smiles and a light-hearted atmosphere to any gathering. Her charismatic presence lights up the room, drawing people in with her charm, confidence, and magnetic personality. His flexible approach to problem-solving allows him to adapt to changing situations quickly and find effective solutions. As a visionary leader, she consistently looks beyond the current trends, imagining innovative possibilities that have the potential to shape the future. Her empathetic nature enables her to connect with others on a deep level, understanding their emotions and offering support when needed. Even in the face of challenges, his optimistic outlook shines through, inspiring those around him with hope and a positive perspective. Despite his remarkable achievements, he remains remarkably humble, always willing to listen and learn from others. Her open-minded approach to new ideas and perspectives fosters a diverse and inclusive environment where everyone's contributions are valued. Overall, the speaking test will happen in a very relaxed atmosphere. The examiner will be friendly and polite. Remember, the test is just to gauge your competence in English. So, be confident. Speak freely and confidently. Put your best foot forward. Speak clearly, at a normal pace. Be creative. At times, you may not have much to speak about. So be creative and speak about what you would do. If you were in that situation, sometimes, stretching a detail might work. For example, if talking about a city or town. Describe the buildings, major roads and highways, parks, restaurants, shopping malls, university and colleges, clubs, places for children and youngsters. Be relaxed. If you are nervous, it will reflect as your speech. So take a few deep breaths before you enter the examiner's room. Tell yourself that you are prepared and that this is just a casual, friendly meeting. If you need the transcripts of the sample responses, let us know. To succeed in speaking test, be confident, be creative, be positive. Do not treat speaking test as a job interview. It is just an exercise to check you fluency and assess your command over the language. Practice with a friend who can rectify your mistakes. Record your two-minute talk over a mobile phone and review it. Then try speaking on the same topic again. Some of the information shared in this video is taken from idp.ielts.com. Our intention is to motive and guide you, so that you can get a high band score. We hope you liked our effort. Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and learn more about IELTS through such informative videos. We also offer personalized, one-on-one -on -one online classes. To join our classes, write to us at Contact at signmealsclassesonline.com and let us know how can we help you.